Hi, and welcome to Kane's Top 5 and 5, the five most important stories in cybersecurity for October 2023. First on the list is Lawfare's article, a review of NIST's draft cybersecurity framework 2.0. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, originally developed the Cybersecurity Framework, or CSF, to focus on reducing in risks to critical infrastructure. The new draft, CSF 2.0, attempts to be more inclusive, broadening its scope to organizations of all sizes. Despite its expansion, it retains its voluntary nature. One significant addition is the concept of governance as a separate domain. While this is a step forward, the framework remains complex. Smaller sectors, particularly education, might find it challenging to adopt. A glaring omission mentioned in the Lawfare article is the lack of guidance on advanced technologies like artificial intelligence. So organizations must go beyond the NIST framework by seeking external expertise and doing comprehensive risk assessments for their own businesses. In our second story, the new Securities and Exchange Commission rules highlight the necessity for companies to swiftly assess the materiality of cybersecurity incidents for 8K reporting come December 2023. Companies will have to quickly determine the materiality of cybersecurity incidents and disclose them in 8K reports. This aligns closely with traditional securities laws, but brings new challenges. Decision making in real time is critical. Predefined escalation procedures can aid in making quick materiality determinations. And there's a cautionary note, over-reporting could affect stock prices negatively. Align your internal communications with public disclosures to avoid attracting unwanted attention. In our third story, the New York State Department of Financial Services has posted a proposed amendment to its cybersecurity regulation, notably aligning the role of the CISO and senior governing body so they're very similar to the upcoming SEC rules. The original article, titled NYDFS Issues Revised Proposed Second Amendment to its Cybersecurity Regulation, describes these alterations. Under the amendment, the senior governing body is required to exercise effective oversight on cybersecurity risk management, mirroring SEC's emphasis. Additionally, the revision clarifies the process and expectations around risk management, suggesting that companies conduct annual evaluations to align with both NYDFS and SEC guidelines, resulting in a consolidated approach towards managing cybersecurity risks. Our fourth story is a press release from the International Gaming Standards Committee unveiling a Cyber Resiliency Committee, CRC. In their press release, the CRC aims to establish cyber risk management, governance, and framework controls for casino operators. Because I guess they didn't know standards already existed. This move follows cybersecurity woes at MGM Resorts and Caesars Entertainment, signifying an industry Hail Mary pass for self-regulation versus external oversight. The CRC plans to devise ready-to-use standards to augment industry-wide cybersecurity, working with IGSA members skilled in this domain. However, concerns loom around the efficacy of self-regulation. Can self-crafted standards provide enough rigor? And will this initiative adequately address vulnerabilities from third-party systems which were recently exploited? The CRC's ambition shows readiness to act, but its true merit will be tested by the, its ability to create and enforce standards that ensure a meaningful cybersecurity posture for casino operators and avoids external regulatory oversight. Finally, Let's talk about a white paper that explores the intersection of corporate law, technology, and cybersecurity. The paper offers a critical view of the SEC's new rule that mandates public companies to elaborate on their cybersecurity risks. It can contrast the SEC's approach, which is centered on disclosure, with Delaware law, which is more focused on fiduciary responsibilities of boards and officers. This underscores the need for new processes and systems to inform the board about significant issues, extending the focus from compliance to operational stability. To stay ahead of the curve, it is crucial to work with experts in the legal and governance sectors. This helps in adapting to new requirements and aligning with stakeholder expectations. The paper suggests that a well-rounded understanding of these new regulatory landscapes is essential for maintaining both compliance and financial stability in our increasingly digital world. Thanks for watching today, and if you want to learn from top cybersecurity experts, be sure to follow our LinkedIn and YouTube page where we host our new series of interviews with InfoSec Pros.